of Warcraft, a revolutionary title that attracted millions of people to the fictional world of Azeroth, has been a leader on the MMORPG boards for almost 10 years, and still is one of the top games in the gaming industry. The game leads the players into the vast and well-developed Warcraft universe where the players can interact and play with millions of other players all across the globe. World of Warcraft was released by Blizzard Entertainment in 2004 and has since then brought the company nothing but success. But how did the Warcraft franchise start and how did a small indie company like Blizzard Entertainment manage to reach the top of the industry? Open a gateway to a world where orcs and humans battle over land, sea, and air for the dominance of Azeroth. Warcraft universe that millions of players know today laid the foundation all the way back in late November 23rd of 1994, when the first Warcraft RTS game was made by Blizzard Entertainment. Initially, only the Microsoft DOS version was released, but it was quickly followed up by a Macintosh release in 1996. The game presented the mighty orcish forces from a distant world of Draenor invading against the human kingdom of Azeroth. Even though previously there were other successful RTS games such as Dune 2, Warcraft, Orcs and Humans brought many innovations such as conquering rebels of the player's race and limited forces missions, in which neither side could make further units. It also included single-player missions known as skirmishes that were not part of the larger campaign. In order to support single-player and multiplayer skirmishes, they used a random map generator, a feature that has been previously implemented in the turn-based game called Civilization. As a real-time strategy, one player, or AI, would present the human defenders while another player, or AI, would present the orcish invaders. Each side tries to destroy the other by collecting resources and creating an army. In addition, both sides have to ward off dangers from the wild monsters, but sometimes can use some monsters as troops. The game plays in a medieval setting with fantasy elements. Both sides have melee units, ranged units, and also spellcasters. Warcraft, Orcs and Humans was a moderate critical and commercial success and laid the ground for Blizzard's style of real-time strategy games, in which personality was a distinctive element. The increasingly humorous response to clicking a unit repeatedly became the trademark of the company. Join the army, they said. See the world, they said. I'd rather be sailing. The game also came with detailed manuals which presented the backstory and the artwork of the game. Orcs and Humans was the company's first major success to that date and for the first time Blizzard Entertainment managed to be financially secure. Motivated by their success, they continued the franchise with a sequel, Warcraft 2 Tides of Darkness, which was first released for Microsoft DOS in December 1995. After the first war brought the fall of Azeroth, the humans retreated to the human kingdom of Lordaeron and fought the second war. At first the orcs again had the upper hand, but due to civil wars between the orcs, the alliance got a chance to strike back, thus leading them to destroying the dark portal. Eager to engage in battle once again, the orcs constructed ships of war to bear them across the Great Sea. They continued the story with the expansion pack Beyond the Dark Portal, which was released in 1996. 
The Alliance believed that the Dark Portal was fully destroyed. However, a rift still remained and the Alliance, expecting an attack, sent an expedition led by the Alliance Supreme Commander, Turlion, and the mage that destroyed the portal, Khadgar. They managed to destroy the portal, however the whole world of Draenor collapsed due to the energy created by Ner'zhul's portals. Warcraft 2 had some major improvements compared to its prequel. It received strong positive reviews and was a big step for Blizzard as a younger company. The game had so much success that in late 1996, Blizzard released a compilation of both the original game and the expansion called The Dark Saga for the Sony PlayStation and Sega Saturn. The Battle.net edition of the game was released in 1999. It provided Blizzard's online gaming service, Battle.net, and replaced the Microsoft DOS version with a Windows one. For the first time, the game came with a level editor. The game's map editor allowed gamers to develop scenarios for use in multiplayer contests and against AI opponents. After their success, Blizzard Entertainment didn't want their franchise to become stale, so they advanced to a new medium, the point-and-click adventure. Three great wars between the Human Alliance and the Orcish invaders have laid waste to the once proud realms of Azeroth. Twenty-two years have passed since Blackmoor found the young Orkling, secretly raising the Orkling within the confines of his prison fortress, Durnhold. Blackmoor planned to mold the Orkling into the perfect warrior. A warrior conditioned to human thinking, but with all the savagery of an Orkish heart. Victory to the Horde! Tonight you sleep in hell! Blizzard started working on a project called Warcraft Adventures, Lord of the Clans. It was supposed to set the stage for Warcraft 3 and tell the story of Thrall in the Orcish War Aftermath. The game was set to release in late 1997, but it was pushed back to 1998 as now Blizzard was a financially secure company and they didn't have to rush projects in order to not run out of money as they had done previously. The game was cancelled right before the E3 convention of 1998, as Blizzard was intimidated by the competition and didn't think that the game reached their high quality standards. The game was almost finished before it was cancelled. It had all of the animations, scripted events, as well as voice acting, which was fully finished. However, the story was just too important to skip, so they hired the writer, Christy Golden, in order to tell the events in a book called The Lord of the Clans, thus starting a long tradition of Warcraft lore books. Learning from their previous mistakes and taking their time, Blizzard invited us back into the world of Azeroth in July 2002 with the release of Warcraft 3, Reign of Chaos. We never paid any heed to the ancient prophecies. Like fools, we clung to the old hatreds. And fought as we had for generations.
we stand now, upon the brink of destruction, for the reign of chaos has come at last. The game proved to be a bestseller and one of the most anticipated and popular computer game releases, with 4.5 million units shipped to retail stores and over 1 million units sold within a month. Warcraft 3 won many awards, including Game of the Year from more than six different publications. After years of languishing in captivity, the remaining orcs on Azeroth were liberated by a former orc slave named Thrall. This young shaman and his reformed horde fled to the continent of Kalimdor to escape the invasion of the Burning Legion, a demonic army that sought to ravage all of Azeroth. To weaken the world's defenses and make their onslaught easier, the Legion unleashed a horrifying new weapon, the Undead Scourge. Prince Arthas Menethil of Lordaeron fought bravely to protect his lands from the enemy, but his fear, dedication, and desperation led to him joining forces with the Scourge's mysterious leader, the Lich King. Back on the continent of Kalimdor, Thrall's horde set aside old hatreds and united with the other races to thwart a massive legion assault helmed by the demon lord Archimon. At great cost, the unlikely union of humans, night elves, and orcs defeated their enemies atop the sacred Mount Hyjal by destroying the burning legion commander Archimon. Together with the well-developed story came the even more so popular RTS multiplayer eSport element. Warcraft 3 was a giant step forward from Warcraft 2. It set the industry in eSports standards and with their Battle.net multiplayer service, improved the way online games are meant to be played. Not only was the game made in a new 3D engine with improved graphics, but also a real-world editor came together with the game, which allowed the players to create custom maps, campaigns, and modes. The release of the robust editor shaped the modding communities of today, such as the Hive Workshop community. Following their success and high rating averaging around 93%, Blizzard decided to release an expansion pack to the original Warcraft 3 game called The Frozen Throne in July 2003. While the armies of the humans, orcs, and their allies recovered from their battle against the Burning Legion, Arthas Menethil, now a cursed death knight, slaughtered the living residents of Azeroth's eastern kingdom in the name of the Scourge. But new forces emerged that threatened to destroy Arthas and his minions. The Banshee, Sylvanas Windrunner, freed herself from his iron bound and rebelled, creating a splinter faction of undead known as the Forsaken. And the demon-tainted night elf Illidan Stormrage, known as the Betrayer, sent his armies to the icy continent of Northrend to strike at the Lich King. Arthas rushed up to his master's defense and defeated Illidan, who fled to Outland in shame. At last, close to the seat of the Scourge's power, Arthas did the unthinkable and willingly merged his own spirit with that of the Lich King.
The game also came with a few upgrades and additions, such as new units for each race, two new auxiliary races, four campaigns, five neutral heroes. An additional neutral hero was added in April 2004, and two more were added in August 2004, and a new separate RPG campaign going through the adventures of Rexar and the foundation of the new Horde. After the big success with Warcraft 3, Blizzard announced something big, new, and risky. gates of mighty kingdoms lies a vast, unexplored world. A world of honor. A world of mystery. Danger. Warcraft was first announced by Blizzard at the ECTS trade show in September 2001. Development of the game started in 1999 and took roughly four to five years, including extensive testing. World of Warcraft used a modified engine of the Warcraft 3 engine. The idea of the game amazed many people. Blizzard promised an alternative realm, an open environment which its players could do whatever they want in their own way. They can create and customize their own characters and that character would progress every time you played the game. What Blizzard promised, they had also delivered. World of Warcraft was a global hit and before the launch of the first expansion, The Burning Crusade, WoW had already reached more than 7 million subscribers. At first, Blizzard only expected 400,000 subscribers, even though they knew they would need at least a million to break even on the game. However, World of Warcraft grew beyond their wildest dreams. It gathered so many players at start that their servers couldn't even support the numbers. World of Warcraft did not only introduce questing and exploration, but many different dungeons all over Azeroth where players had to band together in order to defeat the evil bosses. However, for the advanced players, there were raids. Raids are complex dungeon encounters that require up to 40 people groups, with the main boss at the end of the raid which took a lot of planning and skill in order to defeat. However, in 2005, the player's skills were put to the test with the release of the first Battlegrounds, Alterac Valley and Warsong Gulch, making PvP one of the most important elements of the game today. Ever since its initial release, Blizzard was adding more and more content in the form of patches. First most notable ones were the Gates of Ankaraj and the Shadow of the Necropolis, introducing group events and raids never seen as of yet. Blizzard realized the popularity of the Warcraft series and the fan base around it and decided to spread the universe outside the game, thus starting the Warcraft trading card game series, which was a competitive sport of its own. They also started producing high quality figurines and toys for collectors. The Warcraft universe became so popular that Blizzard decided to make their own yearly convention, BlizzCon. The convention features game-related announcements, previews of upcoming games and content, 
Q&A session and panels, costumes and other contests, and playable versions of various Blizzard games. Blizzard, realizing the initial success of the game, decided to improve it with a new expansion announced on the first BlizzCon of 2005, called The Burning Crusade. Imprisoned for ten thousand years. Banished from my own homeland. And now you dare enter my realm. You are not prepared. Two new playable races were added to World of Warcraft in the Burning Crusade, the Draenei of the Alliance and the Blood Elves of the Horde. Previously, the Shaman class was exclusive to the Horde faction and the Paladin class was exclusive to the Alliance faction. The level cap was raised by 10, making it 70, up from 60 established in 2004 before the release of World of Warcraft. In addition to that, a whole new planet, Outland, was released with associated quests, dungeons, raids, zones, creatures, and cities. At the start of 2007, the Dark Portal opened once again. Nearly 2.4 million copies were sold within the first 24 hours, setting a new Day 1 PC game sales record. I was so sad I never got a collector's edition. Now I got my own collector's edition. The new PvP arena system was first introduced where players could make their own teams and battle with one another in order to gain a higher rank. This feature spawned the competitive eSport community in World of Warcraft. New teams were formed just like in Warcraft 3 and it became one of the main activities at conventions like BlizzCon. The main villain of the expansion was a character from Warcraft 3, Illidan Stormrage, the Betrayer, whose thirst for power caused the players to fight the biggest threat as of yet. His encounter was first introduced in the Black Temple patch, which was followed by other patches such as the Gods of Zolomon and the Fury of the Sunwell. Many new unique features were added in the Burning Crusades as well, such as the guild banks, the heroic mode dungeons, and an in-game voice chat option. On BlizzCon 2007, 
Blizzard decided to reintroduce the infamous human prince Arthas from Warcraft and make him the main villain and a threat to the world of Azeroth and all of its living creatures. The new expansion was supposed to be groundbreaking and introduce a lot of new features such as an entirely new continent of Northrend, the new Death Knight hero class, level increase to 80 and also graphical improvement. They also introduced the new phasing system where the player's environment would change depending upon the progress that player has made. On November 13th, 2008, Wrath of the Lich King was released. My son, the day you were born, the very forests of Lordaeron whispered the name Arthas. Exercising your great power. broke its own sales record for the most copies sold within the first 24 hours previously set by the Burning Crusade with an astounding 2.8 million copies sold. After the release, World of Warcraft gained more than 11 million active subscribers, making the population of Azeroth bigger than many countries around the world. Many new features were introduced, such as the new dual spec system and some user interface improvements. The game was also updated in many patches, such as the Secrets of Olduar patch, where the players could unravel the mysteries of the ancient titans. Players had to prove their worth for the final battle in the Call of the Crusade patch in the Argent Tournament Grounds. And finally, the expansion was finished off with the patch 3.3, Fall of the Lich King, 
where players had to make use of all of their previous efforts, band together and defeat the Lich King himself. By this time, Warcraft was firmly established as a cultural phenomenon. TV shows such as South Park referenced the game. By the start of 2010, Arthas, the Lich King, one of the greatest enemies of Azeroth, was vanquished, bringing peace to the prosperous world of Azeroth. While the players were fighting for the freedom of Azeroth, the developers were working on the newest expansion, The Cataclysm. Unlike other expansions, where there would be an entire new zone, Blizzard decided to return one of their old characters. The evil, corrupted, insane dragon, Deathwing. Deathwing was responsible for the destruction of the entire world of Azeroth and the reiteration of the old zone. This gave Blizzard a chance to work on the original content from the start and improve it so it can compete with today's standards. With the release of Cataclysm, the maximum player level has been raised from 80 to 85. The game's two main continents, Kalimdor and Eastern Kingdoms, have been redesigned with a changed appearance in some new areas. The quest system has been refreshed with almost 3,500 new quests along with new and streamlined low and mid-level quests to complement the redesigned areas of Azeroth. Ten new dungeons and five new raids have been added, as well as a new secondary skill, Archaeology. Two new playable races have been added, the Worgen for the Alliance and Goblins for the Horde. In addition, existing classes have been expanded to be available to more races. The major cities of Orgrimmar, Stormwind, and Dalaran have all experienced major changes. Lastly, the existing talent system has been overhauled. Traditionally, the game was kept fresh with multiple patches, most notably the Rage of the Firelands and the Hour of Twilight where players had to face off against one of the biggest threats to the world. The Mad Dragon aspect, Deathwing, in order for their world to survive. Just when players manage to defeat the biggest threat as of yet, Blizzard introduces something completely new. But soon, 
we will face a new chapter. An adventure unlike any we've known thus far. A mystery shrouded by superstition. A land of forgotten power and ancient magics. And a people that may well change the fate of us all. challenges we have faced, and all the places we have been, Azeroth's limits have yet to be revealed. The dense mists around the homeland of the ancient Pandarian race were unveiled. Thus, Mists of Pandaria was announced. Mists of Pandaria raised the existing level cap from 85 to 90. It introduced a new character class, the Monk, along with a new playable race, the Pandarian. The Vanity Pet System was overhauled and a pet battle system was added. Scenarios were introduced and challenge modes were added for dungeons. The existing 41-point talent trees were replaced by a new system of tiered talents that were awarded every 15 levels. Cross-zone realms were introduced along with account-wide achievements and area of effect looting. The expansion also debuted new elements such as a player-run farm and the black market auction house. As a model already established at the beginning, the game was refreshed with multiple patches. Subsequent patches introduced the Brawler's Guild, as well as heroic scenarios, several additional raids and dungeons, and scenarios and new battlegrounds. Two most notable patches were the Escalation and the Siege of Orgrimmar. In Siege of Orgrimmar, we had to fight an unusual boss unlike none before. In Cataclysm, Garrosh, the son of Grom, was established as the leader of the Horde. Throughout books, comics, and events, Yarash was introduced as the main villain and a corrupt leader. In the Siege of Orgrimmar, forces of the Horde and Alliance were gathered together in order to defeat the newest foe in the Horde's capital city of Orgrimmar. This was an entirely new concept, unlike specific boss thrones as seen previously. In 2013, many things happened to the Warcraft franchise. The trading card game was cancelled and a new online card game, Hearthstone, was introduced. Hearthstone is a free-to-play digital strategy card game that anyone can enjoy. Players choose one of nine epic Warcraft heroes to play as, and then take turns playing cards from their customizable deck to cast potent spells, use heroic weapons or abilities, or summon powerful characters to crush their opponents. Since the summer of 2013, Hearthstone was in closed beta and at the start of 2014 it went into open beta. It is set to fully release in 2014. On BlizzCon 2013, a new expansion and a movie in the works were announced. Warlords of Draenor is the newest expansion estimated to release in 2014. The expansion is set after the events of World of Warcraft Mists of Pandaria and takes place in an alternate universe on the world of Draenor, the original homeworld of the Orcs, prior to its destruction and the creation of Outland. The expansion will introduce many new features, such as a new world to explore, Draenor, level cap raised to 100, 
the ability to build and upgrade your own base, the Garrison. New character models. The ability to boost to 90 and play immediately, available for one character per account. A new game was also introduced firstly as Blizzard Dota, and now as Heroes of the Storm. Heroes of the Storm is a free-to-play online team brawler, starring all of the favorite Blizzard characters. You can build and customize heroes from across every Blizzard universe to suit your playstyle. You can team up with your friends and engage in fast-paced mayhem across varied battlegrounds that impact strategy and change the way you play the game. Even though the 20th anniversary of the Warcraft universe is soon to come, the story of the valiant Warcraft heroes and their adventures has just begun, and the history is yet to be told.